Your attention, please. Please stand for our opening flag ceremony. Color guard attention. Color guard advance. guard post the colors. We will now say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Girl Scout promise, on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. Color guard dismissed. You may be seated. Welcome everyone to our annual awards honors reception. It's the finest night in Girl Scouts in Michigan Waterways Council. Tonight we celebrate our investments in Girl Scouting resulting in precious gems that shine above others for their dedication to living the Girl Scout promise and law. You will meet impressive young women who have earned the highest national recognitions, the Girl Scout Silver Award and the Girl Scout Gold Award. We will honor them and celebrate their achievements. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Chair of Michigan Waterways Council Board of Directors, Lisa Morse. Thank you, Jan. Welcome, everybody. I want to thank everybody for being here for this wonderful event that um, highlights the accomplishments of these young women, um, just shows you how important Girl Scouting can be. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity also to introduce um, special guests that we have here. And I believe we only have one, so hopefully some others will be coming. But um, Michigan State Representative from the 81st District, Phil Pavlov. Oh, Um, also, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank the Kiwanis Club for sponsoring tonight's honor reception. I believe it's um, 15 or 16 years, I think the program says, um, of sponsoring this event. And here to um, receive a plaque from the council is Tom Seppel. like to introduce Lucy DeLine from the Girl Recognition Committee. Hello. The national standard of these awards are sustained at the council level by the Silver and Gold Recognition Committee. The committee meets to review applications, assign mentors, assess reports, conduct interviews, training wor workshops, and plans this honors reception. The committee is dedicated to support all girls and leaders working with the girls who desire to earn the silver and gold awards. At this time, I'd just like to recognize them, if you can either stand or just wave. The silver chair is Maggie Devinney, Liz Tallender, the gold chair is Jan Robert John, Becky Rubel, Kathy Cunningham, Don Kling, Louise DeJour, Jenny Street, myself, and the staff advisor is Jean Thomas. There. 
We have a special presentation of an American flag from the Women's Auxiliary VFW Post 8465. Danielle O'Mara will accept the flag on behalf of Girl Scouts Michigan Waterways Council. I would like to introduce Rita Pfeiffer for the presentation. On behalf of the May O'Brien VFW 8465, we proudly present this flag to the Girl Scouts. And here's a citation for flying your flag. You're welcome. Thank you very much for the donation. It will be put to good use with the Girl Scouts. Precious Gems, our theme for tonight's celebration, is such a fitting image, one I hope you will enjoy. Upon a chest of drawers sits a beautiful wooden box. It has many small drawers and small compartments lined with soft red velvet. The box is made of hand-carved oak, and it's worn on the top, where generations of young women have opened it to behold what is inside the precious gems within. But more important than the gems inside the box are the stories that each one has to tell. Each of the precious gems found inside the wooden box are like the young women we celebrate tonight. Starting out as unpolished stones, it took the hands of many master craftspeople to mold, tool, and create the rich result and a crowning moment like this. It is a privilege at this time to introduce our keynote speaker. It's not very often in your lifetime that you can say that you have met a truly genuine person. The reigning Miss Michigan, Octavia Reese, is such a person. Unlike any pageant contestant you will ever meet, her story, her beliefs, her values, and her dedication far surpass her beauty. We are so lucky she is here to represent our state and is here with us tonight, Miss Michigan, Octavia Reese. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. Now first, can I just say that it is um, an honor and a privilege to be right here with you today. Um, the Michigan Waterways Council is a very special place in my heart from I think two years ago now when I was the um, program director at Camp Playfair and a counselor. And, um, and it was one of the most amazing years of my life, one of the most amazing summers. Um, I had just come back from France. I had been living there for six months. And, um, and I think that as much as, as much as this year has been a learning experience for me, I know that if I had not taken some life lessons from that camp and, um, and the experiences uh, that, I, that I probably spent with some of your children there, um, that I know that I would not have been able to complete this year the way that I have. Um, now, I was crowned last June, so my year is coming quickly to a close. In June, I will be a former Miss Michigan already. Now, also please excuse me if you can hear that I um, don't really sound like a normal person right now. I have a very bad cold, and I am also a big nerd. I'm allergic to pretty much everything, so it's allergy season, and um, yeah, that was, that was wonderful. On my way here, I was stuck in traffic and stuck in construction traffic, and then my eyes started itching, and I was scratching it, and then I couldn't see, and so now this eye is a little bit swollen, and yeah, so I, I apologize for my appearance and for my voice. Um, also, I have one more disclaimer, because since I'm not totally myself today, and I'm a little bit under the weather, of all the times when I have my crown with me and in the car and ready to put it on my head, the one day that I'm actually going to use it as a teaching tool, where is it? Oh, in my apartment in Holland, Michigan. So <laughs> I have um, my local crown from when I was Miss Wayne County. And so I called my mom on the way here. I said, Mom, you've got to get to Port Huron. You have to bring me that crown. I can't believe I forgot my crown. And so um, this will be a very special Mother's Day also for my mother because I'm 23 years old and she continues to bring me that lunchbox that I forget in the back seat. <laughs> 
So even though she's not here yet, she will be coming. So hopefully you can see that crown. So instead of having the sparkles on my head, I tried to compensate by wearing the sparkly earrings I could find in my car. So <laughs> these are they. And you know, significantly, I was going to talk about the four points of the crown. And these have four teardrops. So I will use these instead until the crown arrives. Um, now also, with that, also, can we, can we just take a moment to acknowledge the parents and the families that are supporting these young, young women? It is such a special thing to have parents um, supporting your children like this. It's just wonderful. Now, um, the four points of the Miss America crown, most people don't understand that each one of those stones, each one of those gems, really is precious. Each one represents something in the Miss America organization. Now, it's kind of funny because I suppose it's their, um, I guess, formula for success. The four points are service, scholarship, style, and success. So maybe that means service plus scholarship plus style equals success. But, um, but that is what they live by. That is the Miss America motto, and that's a national thing. So even though it's my local crown that will be coming later this evening, it has four points. My Miss Michigan crown has four points. The Miss America crown has four points. And that is something that all the contestants understand. So those are kind of self-explanatory <coughs> that um, that we have those concepts, those four S's. Now about the Miss America program, I actually got involved for the scholarship money. That's one of the S's. Um, because I have not come from a very wealthy background. So many people, when I have appearances, they say, Miss Michigan, do you live in a castle? Miss Michigan, do you have a chauffeur? Miss Michigan, do you ride around a limo? No, Miss Michigan drives herself around in her white Ford Taurus. And Miss Michigan has been living with her mother until she went to college. I came from sort of very humble beginnings. Um, my mother always told us that, that education is the key to overcoming adversity. I'm going to say that again. Education is the key to overcoming adversity. Um, growing up, we lived in the city, in Detroit City. There are bars on my windows right now. There's actually a bullet hole in my front door right now that we uh, haven't had fixed yet. That was from a random drive-by um, over Labor, Labor Day weekend in September. So, um, so we came from that inner city where for holidays, instead of hearing fireworks and music playing, we would hear gunshots and have to hide out on the floor, watch TV from the floor, sit under the bed so that we wouldn't get hit by a stray bullet. It was very difficult to not become a product of that society. It was very difficult to fight the system. But one of those ways that my mother encouraged my brother and I to do that was by education. So while she would struggle to afford private school education in the suburbs, a lot of times that money would then be taken away from things like our utilities and I would do my homework by candlelight and, um, and there would be times when we didn't even have enough, um, we didn't have our water running. This is kind of a funny story. Um, I remember this one winter we had um, electricity but we didn't have running water and we had to go outside and fill pots with snow and melt the snow to wash up and get ready for school. Now coming from that my mother always said that education is the key to overcoming adversity. Now again, kind of fast forwarding, when I got involved in the Miss America program, it was pretty much for that scholarship money because I said, wow, college is over, now I need to keep going to school because I don't want to have a job yet, really. I'm kind of afraid of being an adult, just kidding. Um, and so I was so encouraged by, um, by what the program represents, scholarship. Also, it represents service, one of the other four points of the crown. Now with that service, they have a requirement called the platform requirement. And I'm thinking, okay, what's a platform? Is this a platform? I'm standing on a platform. In the Miss America system, that platform is that social cause, that one thing that you wish you could change about your environment, about your neighborhoods, your schools, your churches, your state, even your nation. Um, and so for me, I selected a platform called Building Bridges Through International Experiences. Now that's kind of a mouthful, um, but 
it was hard to choose that because there were so many young women who, um, who had these great you know, medical things like diabetes awareness, American Heart Association. And so for me, I said, I don't want this to be something that I make up for a pageant. I want this to be something that I really want to see change in my community. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, a little bit about my background in international um, relations. I began learning French when I was three years old. Um, and my mother was a developmental psychologist, so she knew that the best time to teach anything, especially languages to children, is when they are very young. And so she would have language records and tapes that she would play for my brother and I when we were so little, and we were learning French, Spanish, and German, okay? So we were saying goodnight in three different languages. My mom's thinking like, oh my gosh, what have I created here, these crazy children. But, um, but languages have always been a very important part of my life. Now in high school, um, even though we were struggling as much as we were, I was taking college classes, um, dually enrolled in high school and community college, taking advanced calculus and French classes. Now, it's kind of funny because I went to college for engineering and then I studied abroad and I decided, wait a minute, I am so in love with cultures, I'm so in love with languages, and after I returned from that experience, I changed my major to French and classical studies. Now I, <laughs> it's kind of funny too, this, this story that I'm about to tell you about this year. Um, my senior year of college last year, I was accepted to the University of Exeter in England, and I was really excited about that, and I said, well great, I can't wait to go over to England. And then I found out that I had received actually a Fulbright Fellowship, um, which is a complete full scholarship to live and study abroad, and so I received a Fulbright to assistant teach English in France for the following year. And then I said, well, who cares about Miss Michigan? I don't even need to win that. I just want to go to France, and then I'm going to go to England. And so then I competed for Miss Michigan, and I won Miss Michigan. I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe that, um, that I'm going to have to give up this Fulbright and defer grad school. But, um, but I knew that I had a purpose, and I had, um, I had this platform issue statement that I wanted to, to promote around the state. And so I have been spending the past year encouraging people to step outside of their box of normalcy, to experience something that's culturally different, um, and also with young children to encourage them to learn about other cultures through foreign language study and studying abroad. Another way that I felt was very important to help people really, not just to learn about, but really experience cultures was through traveling abroad, through studying abroad, and through missions work. It was one of my goals with my platform with Miss Michigan that I would take a group of Miss Michigan contestants to an orphanage in Jamaica. And actually last week, this is right before I got sick, I think my body just said enough and shut down. But, um, but last week we spent three days in Jamaica working with all of these precious little children. Um, and it was, it was sort of a dream come true for me. Um, I really hope that it will be a tradition for Miss Michigan contestants where it's not just beauty queens that wear crowns and sparkly earrings and say, um, you know, I want to make a difference in the world, but really go out and do that. Um, so that's the service part of the Miss Michigan, Miss America motto. Service, scholarship. Now style, I mean, I really don't need to explain that. That's just uh, the pomp and circumstance, I think, of the whole thing, the pageantry, the, um, the evening gowns, the swimsuits, the casual wear, everything that just sparkles and shines and gives parents heart attacks when they see how much those things cost. Um, and then success. The Miss America program really does promote success in young women. It promotes higher education, it promotes community service, it promotes all of those things and more. And it reminds me of another organization, Girl Scouts of America. Now during my time as Miss Michigan, I, I adopted four different points of my own. And those are faith, hope, love, and charity. I'm going to say those again, faith, hope, love, and charity. And it's funny because I'm a classics major, right? I was a French and classical studies double major, graduate of Hope College. I also play the cello, that was my minor. So studying classics, right? We've got Thomas Aquinas and we've got St. Augustine. Studying all those people, they break down the formula for having a perfect life. They break down the formula for the meaning of life in three things, and those are faith, hope, love, 
and charity. They count love and charity as the same one because love is loving other people. It's loving people who are less fortunate than you. It's loving everyone and treating everyone the way you wish to be treated. And so that's how charity and love are thought of as one. And isn't it amazing that we have these girls with us today who are receiving awards because they've already dedicated their lives at this point to those things. They've already accomplished these fantastic goals and projects of community service and including love and hope and faith. Now for me, growing up, faith and hope were pretty much synonymous. I just had to have that belief in something that I couldn't see. I couldn't see myself going to college because I couldn't afford it. I couldn't see myself really getting out of the inner city of Detroit because it was all around us. It was hard to, um, to know that we were really going to make it out of there. And so we had faith and we had hope that things would get better. We had faith and we had hope that education really was what my mom said it was. We had faith and we had hope that we would really be able to reach out into our communities and make a difference. Now one of the most influential things that I've been able to, um, to uh, connect with during my year as Miss Michigan is that um, they encourage every young woman who has a platform to become um, affiliated with a nonprofit organization. And so for me, because education was so important to me, um, I partnered with Education Freedom Fund, who was started by Betsy and Dick DeVos out of Grand Rapids. And I don't know if you've heard of it yet, but it is a fantastic program. And that is, um, it provides scholarship money to low-income families in failing school districts to attend a school of their choice. Now, I, you, you get Channel 4 out here, don't you, WDIV? Okay, Chuck Gatica is the chairperson for the east side of the state. and. Um, and, oh, what's her name? I can't remember. Terry, Terry DeBoer, she's a weather girl on the, on the west side of the state, and she's a chairperson for that side. And I can't wait, I'm so excited for families, like the one that I came from, to be able to know about that program and know that there, that there is an organization who's willing to help them go to school and succeed in those ways, in academic ways. Now the other organization that I have partnered with is UNICEF, and that was all about my platform, all about international experiences, all about really caring for children around the world who have been forgotten because, of, because they're in societies that are, that are failing, that are struggling. And so again, that's one of the reasons why I felt it was so important that I would be able to share that missionary experience with Miss Michigan contestants. So again, I'm going to take this time to thank you so much, and I applaud you, I congratulate you. I hope too that I'm encouraging you to maintain your hope and your faith and your love and your charity, and that when Girl Scouts, maybe the ceremonies and maybe the troop meets are, are over for you guys when you graduate from high school, but I hope that you would continue to give to this fantastic organization and be examples and role models in your community. Thank you. Thank you, Octavia. You are an inspiration and a real jewel to our Michigan Waterways Council. She has participated in so many program events and has been so out front with the girls. They all love her so much. We were really, really lucky she drove across the state to be with us tonight. Thank you. Um, this year, um, there are girls who've reached a significant, significant event in their Girl Scout career. That is 10 years of membership, and Dawn Kling will present this honor. Thank you. I am pleased to present the following Girl Scouts their 10-year membership plan. Please come forward as I call your name. Fortunately, we have just three, so if I don't call your name and you're here, um, as of check-in, please let me know and we'll make sure we call you up. Um, Ashley Amather. <laughs> Cassandra O'Meara. Congratulations. <laughs> 
position. She's kind of perfect. And Julie Fox. Congratulations, girls. Michigan Waterways, Girl Scouts Michigan Waterways Council is privileged to have community support to provide graduating senior Girl Scouts with scholarship opportunities. We would like to acknowledge the scholarship donors and um, the ones that we are present, we're going to call forward, if you're present, please um, come forward as I call your name. The VFW Women's Auxiliary Post 8475, Mary O'Brien. I'm sorry, 8465. We have something for you. I have uh, a certificate for each of the girls that is of the ladies and gentlemen, the veterans of foreign wars of the United States, how they present our outstanding achievement citation to continue with policy for receiving the highest award that a group senior girl scout can earn. The Girl Scout Award recognizes your leadership and organizer Facial skills and confirms your commitment to your community. We hope this achievement will be the beginning of a lifetime of active citizenship and it's signed by Grace President of our Secretary, and I have one for each of the eight girls. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> Business and Professional Women's Club of Port Huron. Thank you very much for your support. <laughs> League of Catholic Women from Marine City. Thank you very much for your support. Also, St. Clair Community College for their support. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, the rest of our scholarship donors are Benjamin Komalski Memorial, the Bud Shaw Memorial, Emma Schulte Memorial, Blue Water Women's League, Area Association of University Women, the Women's Life Caring Hearts, C757, Jerry and Larry Barber, and Donna and David Schwartz. We'd like to thank all of them. Without them, we would not have the scholarships we have available. We want to thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce Becky Rubel of our recognition committee, and she is going to be presenting our scholarships. Good evening. There are five requirements for the scholarship program. Girls must be a senior in high school and have earned the Girl Scout Gold Award. They must currently be a registered and main, must be registered Girl Scout and maintain an active status in scouting also. Scholarships are committed to continuing education at the college, university, or vocational training level. There are four 2000, there are four 2006 Gold Award scholarship recipients this evening. Amber Bailey received her award in 2005. Her project was raising radar a leader dog for the blind. She is currently working on her third dog, Duke, who is also with us tonight. 
She will be attending Davenport University to study sports management and hopes to become an athletic director or a sports team manager. Our second recipient is Crystal Fox. Crystal is a 2005 gold recipient. Her project was called Babe. She, call, she decorated and painted the maternity ward at Port Huron Hospital. She collected items to be provided to diverse mothers in need and gave special presentations to teen mothers and single parents. She will be attending St. Clair County Community College and transfer to Grace Bible College for a degree in early education. Our third and fourth contestant contestant, <laughs> recipient. <laughs> Stephanie Gooden and Cody Lynn Johnston are receiving their gold awards later in the project. They come up. They come oh, they come up? Okay. Come on. Later in our program, you will hear the details of their projects and their college plans. Congratulations, ladies, and good luck. As gems are tumbled, cut, and polished, it reveals what lies beneath, emeralds, sapphires, and rubies, diamonds, and all the traits that make each one more valuable than the rest appear only after much work has gone into crafting the stone. A gem appraiser would look for the four C's when evaluating a stone, color, cut, clarity, and carrot and our brand new C's that we use to appraise the impact of Girl Scouting can be found in our bold new mission statement. Girl Scouting builds girls of confidence, courage, and character who make the world a better place. The rubies and sapphires and emeralds will begin to shine now as Maggie Devaney, the chairperson of the Silver Award Committee, will make the presentations of the Girl Scout Silver Award. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and our special guests, and especially our very valued award recipients. Excuse me also, my voice will break in and out. I also suffer from springtime allergies, so you might get a free show tonight. <laughs> I'll do my best to hang in there. Liz Tolander and I have the privilege of working as Silver Award Council advisors. Our role in the council is to run training programs for all those girls and their advisors who are thinking of taking on the Silver Award Challenge to help them understand just how much they might have to chew. We also have a very special honor of working directly with those girls who are in the process of completing their Silver Award projects. To these girls, and their advisors, we provide resources, support, and endless, endless encouragement. The best part of my job is working with the girls and their advisors and being a member of this council. But the honor I have tonight of introducing to you some of our 2006 Silver Award recipients is the highlight of my year. These girls have worked hard, hard to fulfill the many hours of prerequisite work necessary in addition to the 40-hour Civil Award project commitment to receive the second highest honor offered nationally by the Girl Scouts of America, the Silver Award. Silver Award projects can be truly enlightening challenging, frustrating, exasperating, and invigorating. 
an entire, an entire troop, a small group, or an individual scout can undertake a silver award project. Goes. Our first silver award recipients will represent a cadet troops project. <clears throat> Finding a project that incorporates the interests of such diverse groups of girls can present a real challenge to both advisors and the girls. But Troop 210 of Memphis rose to meet this challenge. Would Troop 10's advisor, Brigida Merchant, come to the stage? Are you here tonight? There she is. The following troop members will receive their silver award this evening. La Ashley Amthor and Lisa Molesky. Girls, would you like to go over there? And the direction said. What did you forget to do? All right, when you get done, then go back and shake the gentleman's hands. Stay there. <laughs> A challenging event, the Silver Award Project. The remaining members of this troop have National Honor Society commitments and will be receiving their awards at a later date. Their project was Adopt a Trail and Environmental Awareness One. They were seeking a project that was worthwhile as well as a growth experience, and this troop made a year-long commitment to adopt the trail program at the Pine River Natural Center, Nature Center in Goodles. Working with Lisa Appel, the Operations Coordinator for the Nation Natural Center, <laughs> Nature Center, told you it's going to be a good show. They made the commitment to become trail stewards to the Hillside Trail. Their duties included relining the trail with logs, picking up litter, removing invasive species, learning to identify plants, animals, insects, and trees. They developed a logbook recording the different environmental impacts of the changing seasons upon the trail and discussed ways that they might improve it. They improved the trail by installing posts that they used <coughs> to mark the different types of trees and plants along it. They also installed two benches made from recycled logs to provide seating along the trail. Additionally, Several of the girls volunteered their time to the summer nature program run by the center where they helped with workshops such as what lives in the stream, insects mania, and live animal presentations. They also helped with night hikes, scavenger hunts, cross country skiing clinics, that proved to be a challenge this year, and designed posters showing endangered animals and how we can all help save them for the Earth Day presentation. In February, this group of very industrious young ladies expanded their project. They completely organized two workshops for brownies to fulfill all the requirements necessary to earn the triad for animal, the animal triad, or their eco explorer triad. The most successful part of their project was learning that everyone can be responsible in their own way for overcoming a problem. By working together and strengthening their leadership skills, they were able to demonstrate and share the information necessary to help all of us take care of our environment. They are proud of the fact that as cadet scouts, they serve as role models for the brownies they worked with and they look back on their contribution to the Hillside Trail improvements as something that everyone can now enjoy. Troop 10, thank you. Cheyenne, did she get here? Your mom got here? Okay. Our next recipient <clears throat> is an individual scout who came out of Troop 231 in Fort Gratiot. Her advisor, Donna Hare, is not here tonight, so we're going to invite her mother up to the stage to pin her. Would you come up? 
Cheyenne Johnson. Cheyenne's project is My Guy and I Dance. Cheyenne's Silver Project is an example of just how much perseverance it sometimes takes to achieve this award. Just when you think you're right on track and have everything going, whoops. Her original dance plans were to take place within her community church, but a leaking roof and unscheduled maintenance at her church center made her cancel the event. Even though it was mid-January, the deadline for all projects being April 1st, she didn't give up her quest for silver. She contacted our program director, Jean Thomas, and took on the challenges to help plan the council's My Guy and I Dance, which takes place in February. <coughs> Despite a very, very tight timeline, Cheyenne managed to design and make two craft projects, a crown headband and a princess wand for each of the 150 little princesses expected to attend the dance. Each girl also and their escort also received a lovely handmade corsage. But preparing all the materials for crafts and Crossages was only part of Cheyenne's responsibilities. She also organized a volunteer workforce to help run the craft tables during the dance and clean up afterwards. The best part of her project was when it was over, she says. She got to see all those girls having fun, laughing, smiling, and bonding with those special guys. The most important thing she learned is you need to believe in yourself and to listen to those around you who encourage you to do your best and not give up. If you have faith in yourself, you can accomplish anything. Cheyenne. Our next scout is from Troop 18. Her advisor is Emily Wallace. Would you come to the stage, Emily? Our Silver Award recipient is Elizabeth Wallace. Elizabeth Wallace is a go-getter. Her project was to organize and run an after-school math tutoring program at Fort Gratiot Middle School. But she quickly learned that organizing and launching such a program was no easy task, especially for a single scout. But she wanted her project to be something she felt strongly about, which used her math skills, and help people develop the skills they would need to manage their money in the future. Undaunted by the challenge, and with the help of the Na Junior National Honor Society supervisor, her principal, and vice principal, she created a rough outline and then working with the administrators, helped fine tune that project so it met both the requirements for the school and the Girl Scout standards. She recruited seven eighth graders from the school's advanced math class to help assist her in tutoring and her mom, her aunt and her godmother volunteered to act as supervisors for her program. Her program was set up to meet twice a week after school and was open to sixth through eighth graders who needed help with their math skills. After she developed an advertising campaign using flyers and posters and school announcements to promote the tutoring, she was ready to launch her program last fall. But Elizabeth discovered sometimes even when you do everything according to plan and by the rules, things just don't work out the way you planned. Just before she opened her program, her school, the school was assigned a new principal. She had to stop, take her project back for reapproval before she could start. The new principal determined 
they had to meet one more requirement before she could launch. That one more requirement delayed the program's launch until January. It took patience and perseverance to stick with the project, but she did. She launched her project which ran, program, which ran through January through March, helping 29 students, 14 of them who returned from multiple sessions. All of them improved their math skills. Helping the kids really made her feel good. Her program made a difference by building students' confidence in their math skills. Students like Henry, who just couldn't understand fractions until, in tutoring, using real life examples like cutting up his favorite cake, he, he realized that getting one eighth of a slice of cake was far better than one sixteenth any day. <laughs> Elizabeth's greatest disappointment with her project, however, is the fact that even though it was successful and demonstrated that it filled a void in the school prog program, due to the very busy schedule and the lack of an in-school coordinator, it will not be continued. Emily. Excuse me. Our next recipient is a Juliet. A Juliet in Girl Scouting is a scout who does not belong to a designated troop. They are associated in Girl Scouting through the council, and the council serves as their advisors. Tonight we have one such Juliet receiving their silver award, and this is no easy task. Tonight's award recipient is Julie Fox. Julie's going to be pinned tonight by Miss Michigan. Julie's program was awareness was an awareness program for cats and dogs. Julie loves working with animals, and her silver project goals were to help stray animals in the community as well as to gather information about the proper care and training of pets that she could share with others. After gathering what information she could find from books and the internet, she decided she needed more and chose an unusual avenue to acquire it. Julie chose job shadowing. While this decision led her to her first great project challenge, how do you get people to take your project seriously due to your age? She had to work on her communication skills and design a well-organized plan to overcome that problem. But her plan covered several areas. First, she worked in a vet with a vet at his clinic. There she learned the proper ways to medicate, the importance of vaccines, and the, and the procedures for putting down a pet if necessary. Then, she job shadowed the owner of a kennel and learned firsthand just how much work is involved in caring for a pet on a daily basis. Her next experience was to work with a pet groomer who taught her the importance of proper bathing and trimming of an animal's toenails. And finally, she visited an obedience training ranch to learn the basic ob basics of obedience training the most important part of which is you must be kind and respect an animal if they are to respect and listen to you. Julie then arranged to share all the information and knowledge she had gathered by working with a brownie troop to teach them the importance of proper care, first aid, grooming, and obedience training for their pets. But Julie went one step farther. Wanting to expand her project to do something to help stray animals in the community, she visited the Humane Society. There she donated her time, 
organized a food and supply drive to collect goods for them to use, and also launched a Need a Friend poster campaign to promote pet adoption. Julie learned one person can make a big difference in people's and animals' lives. The most successful part of her project was adopting her new dog, Snickers, from the Humane Society. Even though each of these curls have personally thanked all of those who helped them with their projects, I would like to recognize all those who have supported the Girl Scouts in their efforts to achieve their silver award. To their parents and their families, to all the endless tireless scouting advisors, to the school administrators, the project mentors, and the community businesses, who without your support and encouragement and patience, achieving this award would not be possible. Girl Scouting builds value, character, and self-worth into each of our girls' lives. Through our continued support, and recognizing this unique value we find in these precious gems, let us recognize them as they go forward to meet life's new challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2006 Silver Award recipients. When translating the Girl Scout Gold Award to the precious world of gems, it must be equal to the diamond, a symbol of love and commitment. Gold Award candidates have displayed their love of Girl Scouting through their membership and their commitment through earning the Girl Scout Gold Award. They make the world a better place by discovering a sense of self. They envision and prepare to take challenges while earning interest project patches. They lead while earning silver and gold leadership pins by identifying issues and imagining the solutions. Finally, they take action through community service and their gold award projects. They advocate for others and for issues for which they have a passion. Girl Scouting, like the master craftsperson, has empowered them to make a difference. Less than 1% of Girl Scouts nationwide will ever earn the Girl Scout Award in any given year. In our small council, we always far exceed that national average. We have eight young ladies who will receive their Girl Scout Gold Awards this evening, and it's time to present them to you. In honor of their achievements, each girl will receive letters of congratulations and proclamations or certificates from the following. And we can't hold them all up, but I know all of you are here tonight because of one special Girl Scout Gold Award, so make sure you ask to see all her certificates before she leaves. This is the list of the following accolades they will receive. It will be, like I said, a letter, a certificate, or a proclamation from GSUSA CEO Kathleen Klonger, GSUSA Chair of the National Board Patricia Diaz-Dennis, the National Family Fraternity of Royal Order of Moose, Military Order of the World Wars, the U.S. Postal Service, Memphis City Clerk Mary Crusper, City of Port Huron Mayor Alan Kutcher, and they will also receive an autographed photograph from Minnie Mouse and a congratulatory letter from Mickey Mouse and the Disneyland Corporation. A letter of congratulations from the Hershey Company and from U.S. Representative Candace Miller, from the Department of Education, the U.S. Department of Energy, the U.S. Department of Justice, the FBI, the U.S. Department of the Army Chief of Staff, State Representative John Espinoza, State Representative Dan Ecovetti, U.S. Representative Phil Pavlo, U.S. Senator Carl Levin, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow, 
Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm, former President Jimmy Carter, the White House, George and Laura Bush. So as you can see, they're going to have a mountainous display at their graduation parties when everyone can see how the world took notice on this special night and special day in their lives. At this time, we have a few of our um, audience members who would like to get, stand up and give a few words on behalf of who they are representing here tonight. And first, I'd like to call forth Grace from the BF, BFW, Mrs. Grace. Mm -hmm. Oh, you read your certificate before, didn't you? Okay. Well, at this time, I'd like to call Representative Phil Pavlo come up. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I need to make a correction. I'm not quite a U.S. representative yet, but I appreciate the promotion. <laughs> I am a state representative from uh, St. Clair Township, and I represent the 81st District. And it's truly an honor to be invited to these uh, type of ceremonies. I partake in uh, several Eagle Scout Awards during the year. Uh, this is my fourth uh, time with the Gold Awards. And it becomes very clear when you're in a position that I am on how important leadership is. And this audience is full of the leadership that has provided the product here today. At some point in the very near future, they will turn that leaf over and become their own leaders of their own communities. And the challenges that we face in the state of Michigan, in the United States, and even in St. Clair County is huge. And we need women like this to come into our workforce and be that next generation of fresh ideas and strong leadership. Uh, as a lawmaker, I've often thought about uh, introducing legislation that if you achieve your gold award or your Eagle Scout in St. Clair County, you must be mandatorily a, to have to live in St. Clair County the rest of your life. So our community takes full advantage of that. But we know that with the personalities and the people uh, that are receiving these awards, that's very, not very likely. Uh, they will be out setting the world on fire. And uh, it's mentioned that only 1% ever do achieve that level. And uh, congratulations to all of you. And I have special tributes from the state of Michigan for you that will pass out on your procession through. Thank you very much and congratulations. We begin this evening's Gold Award presentations with Jessica Bark. She is joined on stage by her parents, Darlene and Dean Bark. She is in the 11th grade at St. Clair High School. She has participated in the Mackinac Island Honor Guard and has been a registered Girl Scout for 11 years. She plans on attending St. Clair Community College in 2007 to explore her career options. For her Gold Award project, Jessica worked with her church, family, and friends, and local Girl Scout leaders to inform them of her desire to create blankets for a local charity called KIDS, Kids in Distress. They provide toys and clothing to children in St. Clair County who are in need or in the foster care system. Jessica had been informed that when some foster children leave their homes, some leave with only the clothing on their backs. So she wanted to give them their own security blanket, something they could call their own. Each blanket was handmade with materials the community had provided by donation of goods or money to purchase fleece material or yarn. She accomplished this by putting up notices in church bulletins, donation boxes in the community, and speaking at service unit meetings. With the response from donations, she created 16 blankets. The yarn itself was used to knit four handmade blankets, taking many hours to complete. Jessica purchased fun and fascinating children's printed fleece to make 12 tied-edged blankets. Jessica took something she enjoyed, her talent for knitting and crafting, to create her blankets. 
She also had to step out of her comfort zone by public speaking and approaching the community for support of her project. Jessica concluded that her Gold Award project made her feel good inside and that she learned that she could make a difference. She used her talent to help others. We can all get a warm and secure feeling from the results of her Gold Award project. Congratulations, Jessica. Doing my gold award has made me learn a lot about myself. One thing that I learned was that I can step out of my box and do things I normally would not do. For example, I need to get donations, and I thought that if I went to leaders' meetings, that I might be able to get some donations from them. But that would mean I'd have to get up in front of pe at least 20 people and tell them what I was doing. Normally, I would not do that because I'm a very shy person, but I knew that by doing that, I'd probably get some donations, and ultimately, it would help kids in distress. And knowing that made me feel I, like I can do anything. Being in Girl Scout since I was in kindergarten has exposed me to many new and exciting challenges, including some things I didn't like and wouldn't have chosen to do on my own. My leaders made sure we did all kinds of different things, some good and some not so good, but I learned something from everything I did. And now I like to take time by thanking the people who've helped me earn my award. My Girl Scout leaders, Mrs. Hill and Mrs. O'Mara, and most of all, my mom, because without her pushing me, I would not have stayed in Girl Scouts. I would also like to thank people who donated money so I could purchase fleece and yarn for my blankets. My family, my mom, my brother, my grandma, my Aunt Jackie, Mr. Jones, my mom's co-workers, and Troops 195, 358, and 357. I would also like to thank Jane Robert Robinson of Kids in Distress for allowing me to use them for my gold award, and to my mentor, Jenny Street. Thank you to everyone, because without your donations, I would not have been able to make a lot of blankets for Kids in Distress. Thank you. Melinda Lee will now be honored. She is joined on stage by her parents, Kim and Harvey Lee. She is an 11th grader at Elginac High School. Her troop advisor is Jan Coleman, and she has been a Girl Scout for 11 years. Melinda worked on the Rural Street Project for Habitat for Humanity 2005. What started as a coordination project soon turned into a project of self-discovery. Melinda worked with two other Gold Award recipients on the Women's Build in Port Huron. Over 25 hours were spent calling, scheduling, and organizing hundreds of volunteers over a five-month period. She helped to create a database and did periodic mass mailings. The next phase was working on site where she helped workers sign in and directed them to work locations. She also swung a hammer, dug trenches, and many other hands-on duties. Working on site included all types of weather conditions. There was almost a blizzard the day Melinda herself was in charge of food for the volunteers. When the food was hot and ready to feed over 150 people, she learned the volunteer workers had been sent home because of the dangerous freezing temperatures. Beside that setback, she logged over 110 hours working at the Habitat site. Blitz Week included volunteers from all over Michigan, the United States, and as far away as Central America. It was assumed the, Girl, the Gold Award Scouts would continue to coordinate the on-site sign-in of these hundred more volunteers. And of course, that's exactly what they did. Melissa, Melinda also helped to provide water to all the workers during Blitz Week, as well as assisted the staff by directing volunteers to supplies and tools. Her support and knowledge was a valuable asset during Blitz Week. In her Gold Award report, Melinda reflected on the impact this venture has had on her personal development. I didn't think people would look at me as an adult and actually take me seriously, she said. It really made me see that if you act like an adult and you really want to get something done, you can do it. She also stated, it was such a wonderful feeling being a part of such a big project. 
I know I was only one little person in a worldwide organization, but I feel like I made a difference. It showed me the things people can achieve when they all work together. In just one season, the World Street Project created 10 new homes. And I'd like to inform you right now, World Street is located just off of Water Street, about two, three blocks east of this Girl Scout Center. And it might be worth your time just to drive by and see the wonderful result of the Habitat for Humanity project. Melinda is currently working on her cosmetology certification and plans to attend the Complexions Institute in Toronto to further her career. She is active with her Girl Scout troop and has been a part of the Mackinac Island Honor Guard and plans to continue to work with Habitat for Humanity for the rest of her life. We congratulate you, Melinda, on this achievement. And I now would like to invite to the stage Barb Ernstberger, a representative for, from Habitat for Humanity. Please come forward. Hello. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being with me while I'm doing this project. I thank my mom and dad the most for taking me there before I could drive every day and getting me all the places I need to go. And I thank Ellen Radigan extremely much. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be in this program right now, working with Habitat for Humanity. And working with all these different people from all over the place was the most awesome experience I've had in my life. Working with people from 70 years old and swinging hammers with them and putting up siding on houses was something I never thought I'd be able to do. And I think um, all the people in my life, like my um, neighbors, Ray Laparl and Jerry, um, they've made me the person I am today, being able to talk to them and tell them things. Um, I just thank you very much for letting me have this experience and I'll be with Habitat for Humanity the rest of my life. Being able to work with them was a wonderful experience. Thank you. Next we call to the stage Marissa Chapman and her parents, Michelle and Jack Chapman. Marissa has been a Girl Scout for 12 years and is a junior at Memphis High School. She is a member of her high school national honor society and student council. She is a Sunday school teacher and plays AYSO soccer. Her Girl Scout leader is Mrs. Terry Horton. Learning to adapt to suggestions and results was a huge step in the Gold Award process for Marissa. When her first Gold Award application was rejected due to a condensed timeline, she did not falter. Instead, she examined her strengths and interest and created Cropping for a Cause, a scrapbook workshop for local elementary school children. She coordinated her workshop with the principal of Memphis Elementary School and set a schedule for three sessions, allowing up to 20 students. Next, she contacted scrapbook companies and local craft supply stores for donations to be used in the workshop. She shopped for snacks and assembled the supplies and tools to be used at the workshop. She recruited the assistance of expert and experienced scrapbookers to help at each session. Her main objective was to teach the students how to preserve their memory safely and that by having this information and experience, they would place a higher value on their pictures and memories. She stated in her Gold Award report, 
This project made the students think about how important the little moments in their lives can be when it's captured by a picture. And that the improvement that I saw in the short time that we were together was wonderful. And watching them come up with new ideas was really rewarding since I introduced this to them. This Gold Award project proved to Marissa that she enjoys teaching and has confirmed her decision to pursue a degree in education. Picture this significant moment, Marissa. Congratulations. Thank you. While fulfilling the requirements needed to earn my Girl Scout Gold Award, I have become increasingly confident in the choices that I have made for my future. Working with children and teaching them new things has always been a joy to me. For many years, I have wanted to continue my education after high school and become a math teacher for middle school aged children. When I saw the excitement on the girls' faces as I taught them new things and showed them new tools, I felt a sense of pride because I gave them a new experience that they will continue to enjoy throughout their childhood and into their, their adult years. Scrapbooking is a hobby that many people of all ages enjoy, including me. It preserves, it preserves great long-lasting memories of friends and family. Girl Scouts overall has been a wonderful experience that has provided me with many new opportunities that I may never have had if it had not been for the many influential women in my life. From the early days of making crafts and going on outings with the other troops, I learned how to work with others to get things done as a group. More recently, while doing my Gold Award project, I learned to depend more upon myself to get things done. Leadership skills and responsibility have been a couple of challenges that I have had while completing my award, but I have succeeded with the continuous support and help of many different people. For making this great opportunity possible, I would like to thank Mrs. Horton for being my Girl Scout leader and helping us to receive this great honor. Mr. Horton for putting up with us girls at his house while we had our numerous and loud meetings. My parents for supporting and encouraging me to obtain this award and for taking me to the many meetings and activities that we had had throughout my scouting years. And last but definitely not least, Pastor C. Tungate for allowing me to use our church classrooms to fulfill my Gold Award requirements. I never could have done it without any of you. Thank you. <laughs> Stephanie Gooden will now be presented her Girl Scout Gold Award. She is joined on stage by her mother, Elaine and her sister Tanya. Stephanie has been a Girl Scout for eight years. She is a senior at Algonac High School where she is on the Powder Puff football team and is the manager of the varsity volleyball team. She works with DJ Entertainment and is a third degree black belt. Appropriately, Stephanie's Gold Award project was called Shielding Women from Harm, a one-day event that taught young girls self-defense techniques that they could use to use to get away from an intruder or an attacker. She did a detailed internet investigation about crimes against women and organizations with information she could share. She received permission from the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence to use their database and reproduce reports for her to distribute at her workshop. She coordinated the use of her high school for the location, advertised to the female student body about her workshop, planned for refreshments, and assembled information packets. Stephanie's dramatically charged workshop resulted in a very emotional Gold Award report. She stated, because you took the time to prepare and organize one evening, that could change the rest of someone's life. She continues, that's what Girl Scouting is all about, making a difference in someone's life. I gave the girls the confidence and hopefully the skill that when and if they ever get into a situation, they can protect themselves. She also reflected that she finally got a sense of self-worth and she realized that she is all talk and action. Stephanie plans to attend St. Clair Community College and the Lakewood School of Therapeutic Massage. The talk is the work and the action is obtaining the gold. Congratulations, Stephanie.
Wow, if this is the biggest honor as you know I'll ever obtain in Girl Scouts, I'm in trouble for graduation day. <laughs> Honestly, I'm in big trouble. But as Ms. Robert John said, doing this gold project, I almost gave up because there was a time in, when I had a part-time job and I was trying to graduate. And to me, there was just no way impossible that I'd be able to accomplish everything that I've accomplished this evening. And I think the biggest thing for my own gold project and what I've learned my own self is that when you can make a difference in somebody and give them the ability to see tomorrow and let them be their own thing, their own person, and let them, you know, sunshine on the world, that is the most greatest gift you can ever give anybody is to let them be their own person. And within my own heart, I knew that I did the right thing and I did something that I love to do and something that I love to be a part, which is Girl Scouts. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't honestly be standing here tonight if it wasn't for my mentor, Dan, thank you very much, and my own mother who has been an excellent leader through my eight, excuse me, eight years of Girl Scouts and a mother on top of that, on top of her own busy schedule, has always prided me and always supported me in everything I did and everything that I still do and plan to accomplish. I also, you know, as much as you don't think, I like to thank you, my little sister Tanya, though giving me a hard time and, and just making my life a total miserable wreck some days, you don't realize that you do make a difference and you do help me a lot. And to my other family and to my very best friend, thank you so much for your support and helping me in everything I did and giving me that extra kick that I always needed when I needed it or was down and out and never thought I could accomplish anything. And you did. And that's why I'm standing here tonight is because of all of you. And I thank you dearly from the bottom of my heart. Danielle O'Mara will now come forward to receive her Girl Scout Gold Award. She is joined on stage by her parents, Kathleen and Paul O'Mara. Danielle is in the 11th grade at St. Clair High School. She is a member of the National Honor Society and Student Council. She is very involved in her church community youth group and as an assistant catechist. She has been a Girl Scout for 11 years and participated in the Mackinac Island Honor Guard. Her troop leaders are Ms. Barb Hill and Ms. Darlene Bark. After graduation next year, she plans to study pharmacy at U of M. For Danielle's Gold Award project, she worked as, the, as a volunteer coordinator for Habitat for Humanity. She organized volunteers, including calling and reminding volunteers about training sessions and mailing vital information. She scheduled days for them to work on the build. The days spent on the actual building site were thrilling and exciting for Danielle. During the project, she learned how to set up a canopy tent, waterproof, taping, insulation, catching, hang siding, installing J channels and soffits, painting and hanging trim, and much more. She spent over 140 time-logged hours on her Gold Award project. When working with an organization such as Habitat, Danielle had to work on an already established schedule. As you can imagine, Habitat's effort is a year-long task. It publishes the site and build times far in advance to help recruit the volunteers it needs to accomplish the work. Therefore, her Gold Award project commitment had to work extra hours to meet the final destination, which was to see the build through to the end. Danielle far exceeded the required 65 hours a Gold Award project requires. Seeing the Habitat project through to the end was far more important to her, and for that, the Habitat staff cited her as one of the top 20 volunteers for hours worked. 
Danielle was very expressive in her Gold Award report about what habitat came to mean to her through this experience. She stated, the unity was the best thing about Habitat for Humanity. I met numerous role models that helped make my project possible. The smiling faces of the soon-to-be homeowners were definitely motivating throughout the project. It is extremely emotional to help build what will someday be a home, especially for the struggling families that remained friendly and energetic throughout the entire project. This experience was truly moving and meaningful. She concluded, my experience with Habitat for Humanity has provided self-discovery. I never imagined that I would learn so many new skills used to build a house. I also developed communication and leadership skills that I never recognized. The project was truly a road to discovering myself. Danielle, discover what it feels like to be a Gold Award recipient. Congratulations. Wow, it's hard to follow up the emotion that was felt, especially in the last speech I was about to cry. It's amazing. Okay. Well, I received a notice from Alan Radigan, who sits in the back, an awesome woman, I must say, who also became my awesome, awesome project mentor that I really did need, which described that the council was looking for girls interested in getting their gold award working with the nonprofit organization Habitat for Humanity. Since I was nearly finished with the preparatory requirements and had no prior ideas for my project, I gladly accepted. The first couple of meetings in February and March of 2005 were simply organizing volunteers for the All Women's Build, in which Melinda Lee, Caitlin Ballou, Ellen, and I worked together to accomplish. Melinda and Caitlin were also working towards their Gold Award. Both of these awesome young women brought something special to the project. The Women's Build was one of the 10 houses being built along Royal Street in Port Huron to benefit struggling local families. Organizing volunteers included calling and reminding volunteers about training sessions, mailing vital information, and scheduling days for them to work on the build. The days spent on the site proved to be more thrilling and exciting. Melinda, Caitlin, Ellen, and, Ara- and I arrived at the site before the volunteers so that we would have time to set up the sign-in table. Sign-in started at 8 as more and more eager volunteers gathered to help out Requiring volunteer forms to be filled out and making duct tape name tags also became routine with every Saturday. It was slightly different during Blitz Week, June 20th to June 24th last year, in which hundreds of people from all over the country and a group from a sister city in Guatemala came together to accomplish one goal, to create homes for desperate families. With so many different people working towards the same goal, Teamwork was definitely displayed and led to the amount of progress made during that week. Basically, sign-in was more efficient and plastic envelopes with duct tapes replaced, or with name tags replaced the duct tape. Throughout the duration of the project, I learned several new, skill, new skills as stated before. My favorite would probably have to be waterproofing because we got to wear these awesome yellow boots and parade around the grounds with them. Earning my Gold Award through Habitat for Humanity allowed for me to volunteer for a worthy organization. Just helping out was a reward in itself. The benefits the the project provided for the community made it even more worthwhile. The smiling faces of the soon-to-be homeowners were definitely motivators. They showed great appreciation for all those who assisted in the build. It is so emotional to help build what will someday be a home, and is now, especially for the families that really worked hard for these houses. My Gold Award project had an impact on the community as well as family and friends. However, I think it had the biggest impact on me. I've de- developed so many relationships with Melinda and Ellen and Caitlin. They all offered so much support. Also, the homeowners themselves were just amazing people, and they just, they always had smiles, and it was amazing and just motivating. And the unity was the best of it all. Starting every day on the site holding hands and praying was emotional, meaning so many different people were like, it was so exhilarating. And I really need to thank so many people for this, this awesome project. This includes Alan Radigan, Jim Faulkner, who's the executive director of Habitat for Humanity, Catherine Walton, 
who was the volunteer coordinator, Jim Wire, construct, uh, construction and site manager, Barbara Ernsbeier, church relations manager, and all other Habitat staff members, as well as Melinda Lee, Mrs. Lee, Caitlin Ballou, and then of course, Mrs. Hill and Mrs. Bark, my troop leaders. And then my oh, gold committee mentor, Lucy DeLine, and of course, my parents. Thank you so much. I am so honored to have this, this opportunity to just express how much, how much it meant. Thank you very much. Stay right here, stay right here. Stay right here. We want to call Barb back to the stage from Habitat for Humanity. Our next recipient is Ellen Horton, joined by her parents, Terry and Eric Horton. Just you? Can you be help hold all her supplies then? Because the dad's not here. Ellen is an 11th grader at Memphis High School, where she is involved in the National Honor Society and Drama Club. She has been a Girl Scout for 11 years, and her mother is also her Girl Scout leader. A passion for history and the desire to preserve her small town heritage was the reason Ellen chose to put together a historical portfolio of the homes in Memphis, Michigan. She decided a long time ago that her future was in the past, and she wanted to do all she could so the information about the town's historical houses would be preserved so others could appreciate them. Upon starting her project, she realized there was not as much information about her town's historical homes as she had thought. She made a presentation to the Historical Society, asking them for contacts and perhaps a donation to fund her project. This launched the process of setting up appointments, interviews, photographing, and writing reports. Interviews included meeting and speaking to family members who were related to the original homeowners. She was also given the opportunity to tour a home currently uninhabited, yet it remained filled with the family's heirlooms and treasures. All the families she worked with were eager to provide information and share old photographs. The next phase of her project was creating the portfolio, scanning pictures, creating Word documents to transfer to a publishing program. When the initial transfer of information did not work, she had to start of course, over again from the beginning. But learning from the past also meant perseverance for Ellen. And after three attempts, she finally had her product. The results of over 100 hours of research, editing, and publishing is a magnificent portfolio of the historical homes in Memphis. It is really quite impressive, considering nothing like this ever existed before Ellen's Gold Award project. In her final report, Ellen reflected, my project benefited future generations by giving them information that may have not been recorded. She hopes that the work she has started will continue until all the historical homes in her small hometown will be cataloged in a final portfolio that the Historical Society might choose to continue in the future. Ellen foresees her future will still lie in the past as she hopes to study history or art history as a college major. Ellen, this is truly a historical day in your life. Congratulations for earning the Girl Scout Gold Award. I chose to do this project because I loved history in old homes and I've always been fascinated by them. And for my gold award, I wanted to do something that would be special to me, something that I would really cherish and be proud of. I believe the most important thing that I learned was the, how, the importance of preserving history. 
because most people don't think to record it. They don't think it's important or no one will care, but 100 years down the road, people really wish that information would have been recorded. And this is especially so in Memphis. It's such a tight-knit community. It's only one square mile, and everyone sees the homes in Memphis, and they all care about them, and they know the people that lived in them. And they want to know more about the homes, generally. <laughs> My favorite part was getting to look inside the old homes and getting to see all the heirlooms and photographs and everything like that. And doing this project was a great opportunity for me. It definitely helped me communicate with others better. I'm a really shy person, and it's hard for me to talk to people that I do not know. Through doing this project, I believe that I gained a little bit more confidence and I have realized that I can talk to people. When I graduate, I want to be an historian, so this project was a perfect opportunity for me to reach out towards this dream. I would like to thank Joan Ross for helping me get started on my project. She showed me all the documents that were available at the Historical Society, and she also put me in the minutes for the meeting so I can present my project to them and ask for donations and information. <laughs> and I would also like to thank the Memphis Historical Society for giving me a donation and all the people that I interviewed. Mrs. Firestein, Elle and Claudia Harrow, Pat and Leslie Henley, Eric and Sh <laughs> Sue Schneider, Larry and Evelyn Wilson, and I would like to thank my parents for helping me with everything and driving me places and just helping me overall with everything. Thank you. Tiffany Makowski will now be presented with the Girl Scout Gold Award. Her parents, Sue Maycomer and Rodney Makowski, will join her on stage. Tiffany is a junior at Port Huron High School, where she is involved in the National Honor Society, Student Council, the Marching Band, the Spanish Club, and the Math Club. She is also a, a varsity soccer player. She has been a Girl Scout for 11 years and her leader is Ann Geeky. Her future career plans include a four-year degree and then a pursuit of a medical degree from Michigan State University. Tiffany's Golden Board Project helped young, struggling readers become strong, independent readers. The planning and implementation of her after-school reading enhancement program entailed over 70 hours to complete. Her project focused on one aspect of learning, reading interaction, and took a variety of learning strategies to help the students become better readers. The student participants received instruction with facilitators on a very close basis. She had recruited 10 adults and student volunteers to help with the program. Over 50 students in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade at Kimball Elementary School participated in twice weekly sessions for six hours, for six weeks, two hours each day. Tiffany worked closely with the school principal and staff in the design and desired outcome of her project. The program was held twice to accommodate all grade levels. A total of 48 hours were spent in instructional format, with a multiple effect equaling 480 hours of individual instruction. <laughs> Tiffany also had to meet with the teachers for book selection, student needs, and specialized aid. Evaluations took place each week, and as students progressed, they were moved to different groups the following week. She had frequent meetings with advisors over new reading strategies, what was working, not working, and how much progress was taking place, and what they could do to be more successful. The benefit of such a detailed and dedicated project was summarized by the teachers' assessments that all the participants had become better students because of the influence of Tiffany's program. 
Tiffany noted too about her progress from this experience. She stated, I now realize that I am able to go out and talk to anyone that I might want to, and, not, and I'm not afraid to express my thoughts. I knew my organizational skills were going to be of great use. It was amazing how much a person must prepare in order to teach. Even after all this work, the success has a very great payoff, and Tiffany hopes to repeat her program again next year. Congratulations, Tiffany, on your achievement, the Gold Award. Thank you. Uh, when I started this project, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And through Ann Gigi and um, Jan Robert John, I realized I love reading. And when I go to school and I see people that are like, oh, I hate reading, I don't want to do it ever, it just, it broke my heart. And I realized that that started at the elementary level. Like, they didn't get all the help that they needed at an elementary level. So since they couldn't do it well, they never really liked it. So I figured, well, why don't I help with that? So I worked with Mrs. Hernandez real close and awful lot, and I thank her tremendously for everything she's done. I couldn't have done it without you. And um, I want to help or thank all the students and all the teachers and parents and everyone that participated. I, it was amazing to see how much people were willing to help out with my project. And the students were wonderful. They were always coming in with smiling faces and talking to me and expressing how their day went. And, it was wonderful, and I really got a close relationship with a few of them. It was nice. And I really want to thank my mom, because I know there was a few days I came home I'm really frustrated, because we'd work on the same thing for an hour and get almost nowhere. And I was ready to quit, but she always pushed me. And I thank her for that and for putting up with everything. And just thank, I want to thank everyone for putting up with all the troubles and hard work and everything I've done, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our last recipient tonight is Cody Lynn Johnston. She is joined by her parents, Maggie and Jim Johnston. Cody Lynn is a senior at Port Huron Northern High School. Her activities include 4-H shooting sports, marching band, mission trips to Mexico, and she is a member of the Young Educator Society. She has been a Girl Scout for 12 years and has been accepted to the nursing program at St. Clair Community College, and she currently works at Port Huron Hospital. Cody Lynn's compassion for helping others was the driving force in the selection of her Gold Award project. After learning of a close family friend's loss of a stillborn, Cody Lynn wanted to help. She realized that during the sad time, she wanted to give these parents a keepsake they will cherish and perhaps will help make things a bit easier. After a consultation with her Gold Award mentor and the Port Huron Hospital Birthing Center, she was instructed to create 30 or more boxes for her project. Cody Lynn accepted this direction and took each instruction that extra step further. She set up a meeting with her church pastor and created a network of people to support her through her project. She advertised in the church paper, spoke at Sunday services, and set up collection boxes. Close family, neighborhood, and friends were also supportive. Cody Lynn created beautiful keepsake boxes, decorating each one for a boy or girl. Inside, she included a disposable camera, homemade gowns, homemade bonnets, and blankets were lovingly hand-knitted by women in her community. She herself made a bookmark with a poem, a footprint certificate with a poem, a package of forget-me-not flower seeds, a baby teddy bear, a package of Kleenex, and a card for a lock of hair. 30 special keepsake pictures were sent to Cody Lynn by a woman in Lansing upon learning of her project. The picture was one that provided this woman with great comfort after suffering from four miscarriages. To promote her project, and in the hopes of more community support, 
Cody Lynn contacted the Times Herald and they chose to do a feature, feature article on her project. This was then picked up by the Lansing State Journal, thus the Lansing Connection, and the ever-expanding scope of her project. Another Lansing area reader also supported Cody Lynn by sending a letter stating, young parents need all those things you are packing in the memory boxes. She enclosed a small check to help defray some of the cost. Cody Lynn reflected the benefits of her project in her final report. My project has provided a keepsake for the families that will not be taking their baby home with them. It will be a space that they could sco store the hopes and dreams for their baby. I feel good that I could touch somebody's heart and hopefully later on in their lives they will look back on such a keepsake that could never be replaced. We are really fortunate someone like Cody Lynn will be joining the nursing profession in the future and fortunate to also call her a Gold Award recipient. Congratulations, Cody Lynn. I've always wanted to go into the healthcare medical um, field, so I decided to do something with that, and I finally came across so doing something like I want to do something like with babies, but they always have like stuff for, like um, single moms and like people that like don't have enough money. So I just want to do something a little different. So I decided to do something with uh, stillborn babies because there's not anything like with Port Huron Hospital that they do for them. So. Um, I went and I talked to Kathy there and she gave me some ideas of like what to put in the boxes and um, she was a great helper. And I'd also like to thank Pastor Eichberger from Faith Lutheran Church for allowing me to have my donation drive at the church. And Christy Rosales for helping me with coming up with very creative ways to decorate the memory boxes. Kay Lakin for sewing some of the outfits and bonnets. And Chris Brown for also teaching me how to sew and make some of the outfits also. And uh, my grandma, Joyce, for uh, crocheting 30 of the baby blankets. And then Aaron Krozenek for putting my article in the Times Herald. And um, what I've learned from my project is you can do whatever you want. And oh, I'm really bad at speeches. <laughs> um, I don't know, like, just put your heart and mind to it. And like, there's a lot of people there willing to help you, even if like, they do live. Oh, but, like, far away to you, from you, <laughs> and um, no, <laughs> thank you. Getting up here and speaking at the microphone is something that we ask of all of our Gold Award recipients. And most of you do know that is the number one fear of people is public speaking. So I applaud all you young ladies tonight. I know for some of you that was really difficult. And thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. In conclusion, we can all appreciate the precious gems who have obtained their shining accompaniment of silver and gold tonight. We can also never forget a gem does not simply appear. It must be discovered, nurtured, and cultivated. It must be prepared to glisten and shine by a team of craftspeople who appreciate their talents. For that, we are grateful to local school districts such as Memphis Elementary and Kimball Elementary, whose administrators embraced the efforts of Girl Scouts working towards honored recognitions community churches and area businesses that do not turn them away, but confirm with support for the Girl Scouts to advertise and receive donations from them. In the spirit of cooperation, they too join the group of master craftspeople who help to mold our precious gems that sparkle, glisten, and shine for us tonight. May the entire community learn to pass the inheritance of Juliet's pearls to the girls to continue to strive for achievement and gold. I would like to share with you a few words that our new chair of GSUSA spoke to us at the 50th National Session this past October. I believe each and every Girl Scout is a jewel. 
She may begin as an unpolished stone, but through the power of Girl Scouts, she is assured of uncovering the vibrant and valuable gem within, because every girl is unique, multifaceted, and charismatic. Congratulations to all our unique, multifaceted, and charismatic Silver and Gold Award recipients. Let's have them all stand so we can give them a round of applause. Before this night is over, we invite you to view the Silver Award displays on the table over here. And in the showcase, right outside the room before you entered, are the Gold Award um, projects that you can view. The girls have done a great job with their displays this year. Refreshments have been prepared for your enjoyment. Family, friends, and Girl Scouts, our flags will remain on stage as a sign of honor during the reception and for photographs. And at this time, I would like to thank you all for attending, and one last good night, Scouts.